Hi, everybody. Welcome to Custody Matters Live. My name is Danica Joan with Winnie Perry, and we have a special guest named Holly. Super excited about having her today. Uh, and Wendy, tell us a little bit about Holly. All right. Well, Holly Dresson is a poet, a speaker, a consultant, a motivator, a mentor, and a mother of four. She always finds the positive in a negative situation. And having spoken with her, I can tell you that that is definitely true. She has found healing with writing poetry, her first published book of poetry, 30 Different Microphones in 30 Days, and her second book, Welcome to My Bipolar Mind, hashtag pause, reflect, move forward, can both be found on Amazon. Holly has been over on over 90 stages since April 2018, speaking about self-love and maintaining good mental health. She has written for the Good Men Project, Huffington Post, and Elephant Journal. You can connect with Holly on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter with her hashtag, pause, reflect, move forward, and her website is pausereflectmoveforward.com. And Holly will be a presenter at the upcoming first annual Parental Equality Convention in Las Vegas on August 24th and 26th. I know it's going to be an awesome convention and a really good time. And I just want our viewers to know that Holly has been affected by parental alienation. That's how we got connected. So we're going to touch on that a little bit. Um, but as I said, she's one of the most positive people I've ever spoken with. And yeah. after, after I spoke with you, Holly, I was like ready to take on the world. I was like, yeah. I know. I was like yeah. pumped up, man. So I'm super, super excited to introduce our viewers to Holly Dresson and um, Holly. How about if you would start by telling us a little bit about your early days? Like, what was your life like, and how did your journey lead you to where you are today with writing poetry and, and being so positive and all that you do to speak about um, people having good mental health and also mental clarity? Well, thank you so much for having me, Wendy and Danica. I'm so excited to be able to be a part of what you've been doing. And um, it's because of people like you that I even know what parent alienation is. So thank you so much for all you do for the community. And I really believe that it's such a community that's been created. And um, there's so many amazing souls um, that I've met. Uh, I've been a I don't, know, I don't want to say a victim of uh, parent alienation, but um, I, it's been, I've just crossed over the 300 day mark. And, uh, you know, I, I've been told I shouldn't count the days, but I believe that when I count the days, it's one day closer. And that's what I have to hold on to because everything else is madness and which leads to sadness. And you'll find that I talk and rhyme most of the time. So, um, <laughs> but for me, I, I wrote poetry as a little girl. Uh, I, I wrote songs and stories and all kinds of things when I was younger. Um, I was the youngest of four. I uh, had three older brothers. And they were my youngest older brother, if you will. He was about like eight or nine years older than me. So, um, you know, my like formative years, I guess, uh, they were already out of the house, all three of them. And uh, grew up in an alcoholic environment and a narcissistic family. And, and then... Uh, and then I started dating, right? And, and so trying to figure out what that was about, you know, that was certainly interesting and learning, uh, you know, who, who I was and who I wanted to be with, who was going to be better for me, who wasn't going to be, you know, that whole dating thing is, is crazy. And, and as you, and, and now as a woman in my forties doing that, it's completely different, you know, now. So, um, but I had all four of my children in my twenties, uh, worked my ass off in my thirties. Cause I realized that they are pretty expensive. Right. And, um, I had three jobs and four kids and, uh, there was just no time for poetry. Like, are you kidding me? I'm lucky that I was able to, in the process to be able to run marathons and mm -hmm. train for half marathons and things like that, much less trying to find peace and quiet of, you know, how do you write when you're up in the middle of the night changing diapers and, um, being a mom, right? And, and also on, on top of it, trying to be the best wife that I could be. And, uh, you know, and so, so here I am writing about the message of pause, reflect me forward. It means so much to me. Uh, I was in a very deep, 
dark area of my life in my mid thirties. Um, and I expressed it through my hair. If you look through social media, I had purple hair, blue hair, red hair, pink hair. And, and then I shaved my head. Although I've been wearing my hair like this since my, uh, late teens and I'm, and I love it this way. But, um, the message of pause, reflect, move forward came to me really, um, right around when I turned 40, I'll be 44 at the end of the year. And I was like, what is pause, reflect, move forward? And it's interesting because I was baptized, um, August of my 39th year. I, I turn my birthday's in December. And then in March, that following year, pause, reflect, move forward came into my life. And I'm like, what? Okay, God, what is this? What, 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 what is this message? And so, um, so I just started going with it. And, and then now here it is. It's, it's, a, um, uh, it's globally recognized. And I'm so, so proud of myself. Um, I've worked uh, tirelessly on myself. And I feel that the poetry that I write, it really saved my life. And I figure if it can help save my life, then maybe it can help out help someone else too in one way or another. And, and it speaks directly to people that are dealing with anxiety or depression or know somebody that does. And you mentioned, Wendy, about being on all those stages. Like I, I got up and on, on all those microphones all over the country. And like, I would stand there and I, before I would read my poetry, I'd, I'd raise my hand and I'm like, who, who here deals with anxiety or depression or know somebody that does? More than half the room would raise their hand or the other people didn't expect that I was going to say that, or they were lying. Mm -hmm. It's an epidemic that's taken over our world. And unfortunately, um, you know, I mentioned earlier that the, the alcohol had been a big part of my life growing up. And, and, and here it is. It ended up carrying into my marriage. And um, I was doing everything that I could to make my word marriage work in my eyes. I believe I did everything I could to make my marriage work. And, and, um, that's where my first book, 30 different microphones in 30 days came in because I was like, who else has dealt with whether to stay or go in a relationship before, whether it's an intimate relationship or a business relationship or a friendship, you know? So, so I was like, okay, I'm going to get up and I'm going to write about it. And then I published it. It's, um, it's available on Amazon. It's a fun read, but it's all about self-love. It's a little risque and raw, you know, um, but, uh, but it's, that's who I am. And, and I like who I am. I love who I am now, finally, you know, so. Um, well, I, I kind of want to touch on that because um, you talked about anxiety and you talk, you talk about self-love and you yeah. love yourself, right? And I don't, I don't know your opinion on this, but I'll share my opinion with you is that um, I do agree with you. I mean, I think it's, you know, pretty indisputable that anxiety is an epidemic. And I think so much of the anxiety that we have now is people who are not true to themselves. They're not being their authentic self. They're trying to live for other people, trying to meet other people's expectations. Yep. And, and I think that when you get to where you say, you know what, I, I'm good. I got to be me. I need to do what makes me happy that a lot of that anxiety is released. I don't, I don't know. I'm asking, do you agree with that? Because that's what I observe. Yeah, absolutely. And see what happens when we don't love ourselves. And I, and I, you know, a lot of us are parents that watch your show. You know, if we're not loving ourselves, how are we going to teach our kids to love themselves? If we're constantly looking in the mirror saying, oh my gosh, I'm so fat. Or, oh my gosh, my hair is gray. Or, oh my gosh, my body certainly doesn't look like what it used to. And thank God it doesn't look like what it's been through. You know, like all these things. <laughs> you know, what the heck are we teaching our kids? It's not what, you know, they're seeing on social media, although I'd like to think that I portray a positive image on social media now. But, um, you know, if we don't teach ourselves how to love each ourselves and then mm -hmm. teach our kids the same thing, how in the world is anybody else supposed to love us? Exactly. I, I get that. And I think that, you know, we've been taught a lot of times as mothers, we're taught to, to be self-sacrificing. <laughs> We give to ourselves first, we're being selfish. Yeah. And the thing is, is we really do need to give our, you know, it's like, it's like that, um, the oxygen mask in the airplane. We need to give ourselves the oxygen before we can help other people. Um, it, yeah, self-love and it's so elusive to us and like in our blind spot when, that we're even doing it. Like I remember when my kids were small and and I wanted so I wanted them to have things even better than me. So I would give them the adult thing at the you know 
menu and they could order off the adult menu and I would just eat the, the child's menu um, item because it was free. And, um, and you know, you think, well, I love my child that much, but you're also yeah. fine. <laughs> Wait a <laughs> do I love myself? You know. Well, right. It's like you don't know what you don't know, but when you do know, you know. And if you don't do anything about it, mm -hmm. then what message are you sending to anyone and everyone, including yourself? Mm -hmm. What about your second book? Um, Welcome to my bipolar mind, girl. Then, so let's talk about it. And then your girl. hashtag: pause, reflect, move forward. Mm -hmm. But. So let's talk about that. What what is why was that the title of your book and what is that all about? Excuse me, I'm outside, so I'm having a little issue with bugs. <laughs> um, I don't, I'm not itchy, um, but um, okay. So when I was right before I turned or right after I had turned 41, I was still in the midst of uh, trying to figure out my divorce and my separation and what all it meant. And do I stay or do I go for the kids and just all this craziness. Mm -hmm. And uh, I drove myself crazy. I drove myself insane. I ended up um, in a hospital and I refused the medicine that they gave me because I, I know the side effects from what they had given me before. I was diagnosed with severe depression and, and anxiety and, you know, and uh, I had a, I ended up having a complete hysterectomy in my mid thirties. So maybe that had something to do with it. I mean, it probably did, but uh, you know, I was told I changed. Well, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> Anybody anybody who went through who knows with what hormones are and how they affect a woman's body and then you're not having all the things that god gave you what is it that you're supposed to do you got to figure you out all over again and so i ended up in the hospital for five days and i ended up taking the medicine that they gave me they they diagnosed me with bipolar oh she's the classic case of bipolar well i was i believe i was diagnosed to be prescribed but during during that time for six months i took the medicine that the doctor gave me I also um, was experimenting, never did drugs in my entire life, and decided to start mar try marijuana in my 40s. Uh, you know, it's crazy what happens in your 40s, you know, ladies, right? <laughs> so, so anyway, so I tried that, and, and I was just like, I lost my smile. Nothing I was taking was helping me. I, was four I had four kids. I'd get up, I'd take them to school, I'd come home, and I'd sit and stare at a television, and anybody who knows me knows I don't watch TV. I can't sit still long enough to watch TV. I believe it has to do with, you know, subliminal messaging, but that's another show. <laughs> so anyways, so I stopped taking the medicine that they gave me. I moved out on my own yet again and uh, decided to start living my life with marijuana. Yeah. So I did that for about a year and a half and then realized that uh, it was adding to my anxiety. Mm -hmm. But during the midterm, I decided to wear the idea of being bipolar. And, and, and I learned that is nobody is bipolar. It's just something that you're given, you know, you're given a diagnosis in order to be prescribed. I, I truly believe that I've been without all the medicine that the doctor gave me for about, um, about two years now. And I've been without marijuana for over a year now. Thank you very much. Super proud of myself. Mm -hmm. and, it, and I wasn't ever addicted to it. It was just something that I needed to prove to myself because I was doing it in front of my kids. I was like, this is what's making mommy better. Well, again, you know, I talked about, I, you don't know what you don't know. And so when you know, you got to do something about it. And so I did. And, and then uh, I left my marriage again. And this is where the parent alienation comes in. And um, I left to, I believe I was doing the right thing. At the time, I really believed I was doing the right thing that, look, you know, I, if I continue to stay in this marriage, I'm letting people know that it's, a, or letting my kids know, not people, letting my kids know that, you know, it's okay that you're, you're being treated the way that you're being treated, but it's wrong. You know, I was called every name in the book. More often I was called a piece of shit. And, you know, you believe you'd be called a piece of shit for so many years to start to believe that you are. So that's where welcome to my bipolar mind came in. Because I, I, I just wore that idea. I'm like, okay, I have bipolar. What does that look like? Well, you know what? It's just a crock of crap. You know, we all have things that we're dealing with, um, one thing or another for one reason or another, and generational traumas. I mean, I told you, I was, I was dealing with alcohol abuse and emotional abuse ever since I was a little girl, sexual abuse, financial abuse. I mean, you name it, I've seen it. And I've decided to take the time to pause, to take the time to reflect on my life in order for me to be able to move forward. Because if I don't, 
I'm just spinning around in circles, chasing my own tail. I'm not accomplishing anything. And that's not the legacy that I want to leave my children. And that's that. Mm. Wow. I think what I'm hearing you say is that um, we have got to stop and um, deal with our stuff, you know, to heal and to move forward in our lives being happy, having mental clarity, not being, con you know, overtaken by anxiety and depression, because all of those things are caused by those traumas and by our inability or decision, whatever you call it, to not head on deal with the things that have happened in our lives. Yeah. And, 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 and I am okay with sharing with the world that, mm -hmm. you know, I made some mistakes. God, I made so many mistakes, right? <laughs> but you know what? I mean, so many, but I'm still proud of myself. And through this all, I, I found faith, you know, so this, this whole thing of, of what 30 different microphones in 30 days is, and welcome to my bipolar, bipolar mind. And, but the message of pause, reflect, move forward, once you pause, once you reflect, once you move forward, which is the most challenging part, you end up having to pause yet again to reflect yet again on where it is you're going to next. It's a circle of life. Mm -hmm. And I believe in it so much. I, I tattooed it on my arm. Ah. I carry it with me every day. I recite it every day. Poetry saved my life. And I'm not telling you this because I want you to buy my books. I mean, the two books on Amazon will maybe cost you $20. I'm not looking to get rich off of it at all. I really want to help people be who it is that they're meant to be and who it is that they're going to be for your children, for yourself, for your family. As far as parent alienation, which I know this is what your show is about, I, you know, if my kids are watching, I have to tell them that, you know, what you think is not true. I love you so much. I love you so much. And, and, and I think that, you know, we need to be out there talking about this epidemic. Divorce is no longer just an epidemic. Parent alienation is way worse than a divorce. I mean, it's a yes. debilit it's debilitating. And the fact that I've managed to stay sober, no drugs, no antidepressants. And look, and I'm not telling you that's what everybody should do. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. That's just something that I did. And I always tell people that are working with me or, you know, look for, you know, comfort or whatever, don't do what I did, do what I learned. <laughs> you know, we're supposed to learn from people who've been through experiences before. Um, you know, you, you're certainly welcome to follow the message on any social media site, hashtag pause, reflect, move forward. You can follow it and read it. I don't care whether you like the post or not, because I know I'm a scroller too, you know, read the message. It's there for a reason. I, most of the poems that I put out that when I put out a meme that day, I wrote it that morning. I, I have write. a question. I have a question yeah. for you that, sorry. Yeah, um, go. you said you just went over, I think you said the, the 300 day mark, yeah. um, yeah, dealing, uh, about that. dealing with parental alienation. And yeah. I'm wondering, because you are so positive, but I mean, I know you've got to have down days because I mean, it would be, it would be abnormal if you didn't. Right. So how yeah. do you get through those down days. And then you and I spoke before and you said something that has stuck with me ever since we spoke. Tell me, tell me. Okay. Okay. You said I'm a better mom because I went through this and I, and I would love for you to explain, yeah. explain that. How is it that you feel like you're a better mom now because of the experience so that our viewers watching can, can just like, you know, take that in and think like, yeah, this, you know, I can see how I can grow and actually be a better person, be a better mom from this horrible experience of parental alienation. Okay. So let me just clarify. I have four children. I'm alienated from my two younger ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, my two older ones, I talk to every day. I have an amazing relationship with them and I'm all, I'm super proud of all four of my children. Um, all four of them, even and though- And are they because, both in the same, um, same father for all of them? Well, no, my oldest is from my first husband, um, and uh, he's deceased, unfortunately, but uh, my second husband adopted my oldest, so we've lived as a family for, I don't know, we were married, I guess, gosh, uh, 18 and a half years, so he, she was a part of, you know, his life for that um, almost nine, 20 years, so, okay, yeah, 
So, um, so yeah, so you're right. Uh, some days are better than others, just like everything else. But so all the days that I was crying, I mean, I was on all those stages last year and, um, and then this happened and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> all right. What am I gonna do? I cried and I cried and I cried and I I was blocked from their social media. I was blocked from their phones. When I go and I go to see them, I was told I can't see them. They don't want to see you. What what do you what does that even mean? And so I cry and I cry. Man, I'm so good at crying. <laughs> Let me tell you. I, I, I should get an award for crying. But <laughs> but I had to pull myself out of that because what is that showing? That he beat me. Metaphorically speaking, mm -hmm. if I cry, that means he wins. Then I just, then I don't want to accept that. I, I won't accept it. I cannot accept it for so many reasons for my kids. You know, I, I have to hold on to the day that I'm going to see them again, that I'm going to hug them. I, I'm going to smell them. God, I, I, you know, I missed Thanksgiving with them last year. I missed Christmas with them last year. I missed all three of their birthdays this year. I have one more in, in September. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to see her or not because of how my life is now. I walked away from an, emo an emotionally abusive, toxic relationship with nothing, with no money, with no car. And I'm still standing. And this pause, reflect, move forward message is bigger than I ever thought that it could be. Uh, it wasn't just something that I write about. It's, it's a way of life, in my opinion. I believe you can apply it to anything, a text message, whether mm -hmm. you should send or send a text message or whether you should eat whatever it is that you're eating or you should drink whatever you're drinking or watch whatever you're watching. If it's not making you a better person, why is it that we're doing all these things? And only you can answer those questions you. So this time of pause, because I've had to call it that because all else is madness, like I was saying, I've had to pause and be like, you know what, you can either drink and do drugs and pop yourself with a bunch of pills and have all the side effects because that's what I experienced, right? That's, do a combination. And then what is that showing my kids? Right. You know, I know they're watching. I've been told they see what you're doing on social media. They see me. Well, you know what? They see me smoking hemp. You know, I, I, I've learned about CBD and what uh, hemp is. And I believe that marijuana without the THC can help me. And it does help me. And I also drink non-alcoholic wine. I drink water in a wine glass. You know, all these, all these books that I did, I did it. Well, not this one, because I was smoking marijuana when I did this one. But this one... <laughs> I, uh, I did it sober going through whether to stay or go in a relationship because uh, the pot that I was taking at the time was just confusing me because I was one way or one way, this way, that way, you know, and you know, and you don't have to have a label of bipolar to know that you have voices in your head, good and evil pulling you in one direction or the other. Mm. So, um, I decided to write about it and, uh, I hope that it helps someone and, you know, I, I, how do you right. feel that, how, how, I was going to ask you how, so how do you feel that this has made you a better mom? Because you, you mentioned that to me before and I was just like, wow, I just, I want to hear more about that. Like, in what way do you feel like, even though you're alienated from two of your kids, you, you know, you're a better mom. So yeah, can you I mean, kind of, I've, I've, I've learned not to drink. I've learned not to smoke. I mean, I've smoked cigarettes mm -hmm. for a month and and when I was 40, I don't know what happened when I was 40. I'm going to tell you, I just did all kinds of stuff. but like, I learned, I don't want to smell like an ashtray. I don't want to, you know, post pictures of alcohol because you know, I'm having a good time with alcohol. I took my daughter, she turned 21 last year. I took her, took her to Vegas and, um, I don't drink, I don't smoke. I don't do drugs at the time. I wasn't drinking caffeine and I don't gamble. Okay. I figured I was 10 days without marijuana. If I could do that, I could conquer the flipping world. Okay. And here I am, I'm going back to Vegas the following year to speak at this convention about parent alienation, about equality, that we need to have both parents in their lives. You know, he's made mistakes. Mm -hmm. I've made mistakes. I'm willing to forgive him for his mistakes, but God forbid I'm to be forgiven. And you know what? And those are things that he has to deal with. And those are the lessons that he's teaching his kids. I became a better mother because I decided to work on me. 
I found out what I like. I won't put up with certain things anymore. No one is ever going to be able to call me a piece of shit and I'm going to be able to stay in that environment. No one is ever going to tell me to be quiet when I know that what I'm saying and I believe is right. And even if I'm wrong, ladies, even if we're wrong at making the decisions that we're making right now, I believe I'm making the right one now. And how am I going to know if I don't make a decision later, if I'm still repeating the same sad story over and over and over again, how are you going to know if you don't decide yeah. to make a decision? Don't stay in one spot. We're supposed to grow. We're supposed to evolve. And the people that are continuing to do the same thing year in and year out, day after day and day after day, and mm -hmm. only expecting to get up and go to work and take care of your kids, make sure there's food on the table, wash their faces and all these things. If we're not becoming better humans, how are we going to expect our kids to in the next phase of our life? And I, and I agree with you. I think they're watching. In fact, I know they're watching. Right. Um, even if they say they're not, um, kids are just, you're, they're naturally curious and they're, they're sneaking peeks at your life. And you they're, know what? They're if curious. They want to They've seen mommy cry enough though. You, do you know, Wendy? Mm -hmm. They've seen mommy cry. Mommy cried. Gosh, I cried, 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 cried so much. And I still cry. Like I told you, I could get an award for that shit. But <laughs> I, every, I pull myself up and, you know, and I take my phone out and I thumb type. I'm a professional thumb typer, ladies. Ever heard of <laughs> such a thing? That's what I do. I do that. I get up. I go for a walk. I go for a run. Uh, you know, these are things that make me better overall. My kids are going to see that their mommy is almost 44 years old. She's getting ready to prepare for yet another marathon in the midst of all this chaos. God, hmm. not only do I, I want to, the generations before me, I believe that they would be proud of me. My daddy, my daddy passed away in January from lung cancer. And he would tell you to the day that he died that he was an alcoholic. He hadn't had uh, alcohol in 20 something years. And he told himself he's an alcoholic, smoked cigarettes, died of lung cancer, prostate cancer. And while I'm laying next to my daddy's bed, I was told, and I bring this up not to bring up the sad things because I don't like to bring up sad things, but I'm, I'm told in the midst of my sobriety, right? In the midst of the parent alienation, I'm texted. I can't believe you posted it on Facebook. I can't believe you posted about your father dying on Facebook and made it a business. Cause I put the hashtag pause, reflect me forward. Cause I believe he was pausing for my brother and I to reflect on how it is that we're going to live our lives next, that he's no longer going to be there. And he was having trouble letting go and being able to move forward. Like I said, I believe you can apply it to everything in life. Mm -hmm. But at that moment, as I'm lying next to my daddy, I'm reading, you really are a piece of shit. Mm. So I forgive him. I forgive him for being so ugly to me because he's hurt. Hurt people hurt people. I get that. But you know what? I'm only getting stronger. The message is growing. More and more people are paying attention to not me. I don't want anybody to pay attention to me. Pay attention to the message that God's giving you. He's giving you opportunities to pause for a reason. Why is it that you're going through all the chaos in your life? Because there's a reason for it, but it's up to you to figure out what that is. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Keep, keep doing what you do. It's, I just think it's amazing. And your authenticity is... It is just inspiring. I love it. Thank you so much. I love who I am. I, I like I who like I am to, now. I like that we only have a few minutes left, and I wanted to focus on what this conference is that you're doing um, in Vegas. Well, uh, you're you're one of the speakers, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to be. What's the what? What is the conference? What is the convention? Uh, it is about equality for both parents. Uh, okay. You know, even though you may not agree with what the father or the mother is doing at this point of their life, they're still the parent of your children. You decided to have children with them and somehow, some way you guys all need to make it through, not just for you, but for these kids. We, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, we said earlier um, that, you know, I find the positive in a negative situation and that's the message that I'm bringing. If you can get to Vegas, I believe that it's going to make a difference in your life to be surrounded by people 
and, and, and get out from behind your computers and, 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 and realize that there's really a community here and that the only way we're going to get better is if we arm together and say, you know what, we have to stand up for this or things are not going to get better. I would certainly rather bear this burden than my children or anyone else. I cannot allow history to repeat itself. Absolutely. Amen. You know, I, uh, you said something. It is important for us to get out, be with other people, talk. Uh, because the thing is, is when we're in our head, we, that's a, that's a bad neighborhood to live in. It's yeah. And we would all be called bipolar. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> they, they, we'd all be called bipolar. This one's telling you this way, you know, the Tom and Jerry, you know, the little, the good answer. The bad answer. You should do this. You should do this. Well, we're really who you should be listening to is you and who you are. Not what everybody else is trying to tell you to do, especially those voices in your head, lady. Yeah. And, and it's so cool, you know, how we can connect online now, you know, oh, yeah. social, me social yeah. media and all that, but yeah. there just is no substitute for getting together with people face to face in person. And so I, our, I really encourage our viewers, if you're watching, um, to uh, go online and look up the first annual Parental Alienation Equality Convention in Las Vegas, August 20 through the 26th and if you can go it's it's going to be really really awesome it sure uh, is and i would be going if it wasn't awesome right? i wouldn't be going okay right. obviously obviously I'm really <laughs> so um danica i was thinking sure. that a good way to close up today's show would be if we had holly share some of her poetry with us what do you think that sounds awesome <laughs> Yay! Go ahead. okay so i'm gonna read the one um from my second book, Welcome to My Bipolar Mind. And uh, it's really a, a 30 day journey into my life and what I was feeling and how I write to get me right. So this one's called The Plan. I have to wear glasses. Over 40, you just have to start wearing glasses too. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay, so this is called Plan. It was read on day 26 of the 30 different mics and it was read on September 15th of 2018. I'm normally standing when I read, so hang on. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for my rest. I have some things I have to get off my chest. I am a sinner. However, I still believe I'm a winner. There are some people in my life that have chosen not to forgive me. I thank you for never forsaking me. They give me their cold shoulder while I push this boulder. You see, I have forgiven me. They have yet to. Maybe if you get to help them understand that what happened was, wasn't part of the plan, or maybe it was. I believe bad things have to happen in order to see the good. I'm grateful for you. You've given me some things in my life that I don't believe many can handle, from the sexual abuse to the scandal, from the judgment, to the times when all I had was you. Somehow, some way, you helped me push through. To the time, well, let's be honest, the times when I didn't think I wanted to continue. You rose me up after I'd fallen to my knees. You've had people overseas help them see that I'm not as bad as they say that I am. And remind me, I am more than enough. You see, without me, there wouldn't be four amazing children to walk this earth. There was no one else equipped to handle their birth. I'm grateful for the people that are hateful. They've taught me how I never want to be. I've accepted my flaws, yet they hold on to them and haven't forgiven me as you have. Help them to understand that I am only human. Remind them of your words and ask them to put down their swords because this brain that you gave me has tried to enslave me. But I've learned you forgave me, so I forgave me. I never intended to behave badly. Can you help them understand so I can finish your plan? Hashtag pause, reflect, move forward. Very good. Wow. Thank you, Thank you Holly, for joining us and sharing a little bit about who you are and uh, some insight into and just some poetry, beautiful poetry. I'm sure it spoke to a lot of our viewers here. Um, and just exactly what they needed to hear today. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. All right, Wendy? Well, I just want to remind everyone um, that you can find Holly 
online uh, with all of the various social media outlets by putting in hashtag pause reflect move forward and that is also her website is pause reflect move forward and also a reminder to all of our viewers that parental alienation can happen to anyone so it should matter to everyone so yeah. join us in educating everyone about parental alienation thanks for watching bye, bye. hashtag pause reflect move forward